And you'll notice that any time I click on what we call a thought in personal brain, that thought moves itself into the center of the graphic user interface and displays all related information around it. So here, as you can see, I click down to website launch, which is one of the current projects that I'm working on. And all of these projects that were located underneath my current projects are what we call a child thought. Those are all child thoughts of the current active thought, my current projects. And as I click down from child thought to child thought, the brain simply refocuses on that particular item and once again displays all the related information around that particular thought. So here on my website launch, I can see my child thoughts of this particular active thought, which are all the subcategories, the sort of divisions that I have selected for sort of the, the lifespan of my website launch of this particular project. So as you can see, I break it down into research, development, testing, going live, and finally, a general area for website design objectives. And I can always refer back to that throughout the course of my website launch to make sure I'm meeting all of my objectives, that, that objectives haven't changed or edit them as I go. You'll also notice that I have what we call a jump thought over to the left. And a jump thought is something that is related to the current active thought that doesn't necessarily fit into any type of hierarchical structure. All of the team members helping me with my website launch are going to be located and connected to this team member's thought. So at any time, if I want to look up someone's contact information, their phone number, or email, or maybe just leave a, a general note on a couple of new projects that I'm going to be assigning to them, or just some meeting notes during a conversation we've had, I can get to those thoughts very, very quickly and easily and always be able to find that information again at any time when I'm reviewing the process of this particular project. And let's go ahead now and break down one of the, or even two of the steps in this particular project of a website launch. First, I'm going to go into step one, which is my research. And I'm keeping track of a couple of different things in this particular area uh, of my brain. The first is just generally, generally cool websites that I like. I'm collecting links to websites that have intriguing designs, or maybe they just have a nice layout, or there's a, a Java movie that's loading up, or a, a Flash movie loading up on the home page, and I like that particular style. So for a little bit of inspiration from time to time, I can come into this and really pick out components of different websites that I like that I'm going to be using in my own personal website launch. <clears throat> Now you'll notice as I click through my personal brain that many of my thoughts have attachments associated with them. Any particular thought in personal brain can have any type of digital attachment associated with that particular thought. So therefore, I can attach Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, PDFs, even video files, and in this case, websites. So let's say I like the look and feel, in this case, of the Nike website. I can simply click on that particular thought to launch its attachment, which is the home page for Nike. And that's going to launch in my default um, uh, uh, browser that I have installed on my operating system. So for me, in that case, that's Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer loads right up with that particular website. Um, and attaching new websites and new content to thoughts are, uh, is a very, very simple process. I'm going to go over into my, uh, in this case, my uh, programming tools. And I've got an area where I'm going to be collecting all of the web development tools that I either have or that I think I may need or at least need to know about uh, while I'm developing this project. Uh, the project has barely even started yet. I'm obviously still in phase one. And I want to get all of my, uh, all of my things and uh, tools and resources in order before I actually start development. So I've got a website open right now. In this case, it's a, a new tool that's recently come out called Concrete 5. Let's say I'm going to be looking into Concrete 5 along with my developers as a possible tool for uh, developing my website. Now I've got the web page open right now. And all I need to do at any time to link a web page to a thought in personal brain is simply click and drag the icon that you see in the address bar. So in this case, I've got Google Chrome open. I simply click on that icon right in the address bar, drag it down into uh, my graphic user interface. 
And it does a couple of things for me. It creates a new thought. Uh, the new thought is actually the title of the page that appeared in your browser window. And I simply have a shortcut uh, back to that URL directly from Personal Brain. So anytime I can launch that web page uh, and or any web pages I have to go directly to that particular site. Now, in addition to uh, connecting to web content, as I mentioned earlier, we can connect to any type of, of digital information. So I can also connect. I'm going to jump over here to development. And development is where I'm keeping track of a couple of different schedules, uh, web page content that's being created as it comes in. I can uh, link to this particular thought. And I also have a really rough timeline. It's getting changed quite often, and I'm editing this Excel spreadsheet quite often. But I want access to it, obviously, directly from personal brand. I'm simply going to click and drag this particular document right into Personal Brain. And again, it creates a new thought for me. And that thought is called Rough Timeline. And it's a child thought of my phase two step, which is development. And again, at any time, I can launch this particular attachment to easily access that particular file. Also, there are a couple of different options as far as whether you want to create shortcuts in your Personal Brain. Uh, or actually have internal attachments. And there are really benefits to, uh, to both environments. And it really depends on the environment that you're, you're actually coming from. If you have shared uh, folders that multiple people have access to within your organization, obviously a shortcut to that shared file may be the best option for you. Whereas if you are on the road quite often and you uh, don't always have access to the internet or to your corporate network, maybe an internal copy would work best. And I can actually right click on any attachment. You can see here's the attachment that I just created uh, in Personal Brain to my rough timeline. And I can simply right click on that attachment and select to move this file into the brain. So let's say I no longer want that file on my desktop. I actually want to move that internally into my brain. <clears throat> I've actually just uh, selected that option. And that file no longer exists, uh, exists in either its shared directory or, in this case, on my desktop. I've moved that file into the brain. And of course, at any time, I can right click and select to move a file out of the brain. It really is a, a matter of what works best for you, whether you want to have internal assistance or shortcuts to the documentation that you're working on. Finally, one last option for creating thoughts and, and creating attachments is the, the ability to actually create the attachment from scratch in Personal Brain. Let's say I've got another document that will help me with my uh, development of, the, uh, of this particular website launch. And that is uh, quite simply my funding for this project. I want to keep track of what I'm spending, what, I'm, what applications I'm registering, uh, if I'm registering graphics, if I'm paying um, uh, uh, different uh, uh, temps to do jobs for, uh, for the website development. So I want to keep track of, uh, of uh, how I'm spending all of my money. And I'll simply create a new thought called funding. And this document that I'm going to be creating, maybe it's something that I do have to submit to my accounting department for this particular project, uh, it doesn't exist yet. I'm going to be creating it from scratch. So at any time, I can right click on a thought and simply select to add an attachment. And when I select that add attachment, you can that I'm presented with a list of uh, basic document types that I have installed on this particular operating system. <coughs> if I don't see the document that I'm looking for, I can click on Templates and simply follow the on-screen instructions to create any type of template I'd, I'd like, a blank Word document, or maybe a Word document with my letterhead, or an invoice that's, that's uh, sort of pre-populated with information that I just need to go in and edit from time to time for different clients. Um, in this case, I'm simply going to select to create a new Microsoft Office Word document. And that will create a new document for me. That document will be named Funding. That's the thought name. And that document will be attached internally on this particular thought. So once Microsoft uh, launches, it'll have this Word document open and available for me. I can edit that document and close it at any time and always be able to, uh, to get back to that document. And there it just opened up, so I can say, here is my 
budget. So there's my document in the works. And from there, like I said, I can close that particular attachment. Do I want to save the changes? Yes. And I can come back and edit that document at any time directly from the brain. In addition, I can link this particular thought to other related thoughts. Overseeing all of the funding for this project is uh, going to be one of the team members that is working on the new web development, and that's Deb. So I'm going to create a jump thought, as you can see, off of funding. And I simply start typing in the thought name. And as you can see, I'm presented with a list of all thoughts that currently exist that start with DE. In this case, it's Debbie Miller that's going to be overseeing the funding for this project. I simply double click on Debbie Miller, and I've automatically linked this thought to another thought that's located in a different branch or a different location of personal brain. So I can very easily see that Debbie is not only in charge of sort of overseeing all the different cool websites that we're reviewing, since she's got a very creative eye. She's also very meticulous and will be looking at the funding for this project. And she is simply a team member that is working on the website launch which is one of my current projects. All the information for this particular project can be easily found and it's at my fingertips. Now, personal brain can be used for so many different types of environments. In this case, a more professional project that I'm working on. I can also use it for my personal projects. I've got a completely separate branch here in uh, this particular brain for personal projects that I could be working on. In this case, it is a new kitchen renovation. Once again, I can keep track of all of the different concepts and designs that I'm keeping track of, or the contractors, how the money is coming in and out to all of my funding for my personal project. And one of the great things that I like to show in this particular example is I'm not necessarily loading up web attachments to each individual thought. In this case, it's actual just graphics. Anytime I see a particular image that I find innovative or I want to keep track of, I simply drag that image or copy that image off of, off of the web and bring it over into personal brain. Anytime you're attaching a uh, GIF, a JPEG, or even a ping, uh, some type of digital uh, image to a thought, you'll get a thumbnail of that thought in personal brain. And when I mouse over that thumbnail, that image will actually expand to the full size uh, within the graphic user interface. So now I can have meetings with my designer and simply hover over different images that I've found that I think may be interesting or layouts that I'm, uh, I'm liking for this particular project. Just another little feature in personal brain that really, really comes into, uh, comes into play, especially for project meetings and sharing my information uh, when we're gathered around my uh, my brain and, and reviewing this particular project. And Matt, real quick. Now, when we have said, uh, Shelley, did we have any other questions or yes. things over to Eric? Yes. Um, we actually had a couple questions on uh, moving files. Um, the first one was from Melaine, um, as she asked, uh, what about creating a copy of a file, not just moving it? And, and then just to add to that question, uh, before you pass over to Eric, Chris then had a question about when you link uh, to the budget, can you also open and modify the document? So if you could just um, spend a little time talking about copying and where the file is in the brain and, and maybe doing a bit of version control on that, that file real quick. Okay, sure. And then sure. we'll move on to, uh, to Eric's uh, project management brain. Sure. So let's say I'm also keeping track of, I'm back over in the area of my brain for my website launch on phase one, my research. I'm also gathering art assets. So I'm going to create a new thought for all of my existing art assets that I'll be using as images on my new website desktop. And again, if you remember, the default for drag and drop, if I just clicked on Rocket and dragged it into Personal Brain, that would, by default, create a shortcut back to that image on my desktop. Now, the question was, can we also create a copy uh, rather than move the file into Personal Brain? And you certainly can. Uh, you can do that after the, uh, the attachment or the shortcut has already been made, 
or you can actually do it in, in the process of moving this image into the brain. So rather than just doing a straight drag and drop, I'm actually going to click on the control key on my keyboard. Now, I'm on a PC today, so for me, bringing a copy of an image or a document or a file into personal brain is done with a control click. If you're actually working on a Mac, you would actually be doing a, uh, an alt uh, drag and drop into personal brain, and that would actually uh, create the copy for you. So for me, I simply hold down the control key, I click on control, and I drag and drop. And the difference is very subtle. If this was a shortcut, we would see down in the uh, thoughts window that uh, the actual path to this file. But because I held down the control key, I see that this is an internal attachment for this particular image uh, that I brought off of my desktop and into personal brain. And again, that was done with the control click and drag. And there is a third option, and it's both the same for a PC and a Mac, and that's control shift. So I'll move down to this image uh, called keyhole, and I simply click on control shift, and once again, I do a drag and drop. And you may have noticed right away the image no longer appears there on my desktop after I've done that control shift drag and drop. That's because the control shift moves the file into personal brain. So again, the options were the drag and drop, which is the default to create a shortcut, the control drag and drop, or alt drag and drop on a Mac, and that will create uh, a copy, and then find <coughs> control shift drag and drop, and that will actually move the file into the brain. But once again, remember, at any time, you can always right-click on attach an attachment to move a file out of the brain, uh, or even right uh, right click on a shortcut to move the file or copy the file into personal brain. You can always go back and, and change uh, how that file is attached to its thoughts in, in personal brain. And the question also came up as far as when you're just creating a link uh, to a particular thought or to a particular file. Uh, let me go over and uh, I have uh, sort of a sample directory here uh, for some, uh, some uh, sample files. And let's say also on step one, uh, I'm going to be having a big uh, project kickoff meeting, and this is my document sort of outlining uh, this project that I'm going to be working on. And once again, I'll just simply do the default drag drop. That creates the shortcut, as we discussed earlier. And when I click on this attachment, it is going to load the file wherever it happens to be. In this case, the file is actually out on my D drive in a folder called Sample Documents, but that is the actual file that it opened. So I'm opening this file, again, in Microsoft Word, and any changes that I make once that's open will be saved back to its original location, which, as you can see, is back in the uh, back on my D drive here for my project kickoff document. So that will uh, simply launch the applet or the file wherever it happens to reside, whether it's internal or the shortcut. You launch that attachment that it's pointing to, and you can make edits at any time and come back and change those edits again in the future. And Matt, just to, to close the loop on this, um, can you then just move that file into the brain and open it up and then save as back into the brain? Because there was a question about version control um, and managing that within personal brain as well. Absolutely. And let me go over to my development area. Here's the, um, some internal attachments that I already have. Here's the rough timeline uh, document that you saw me drag and drop in earlier. Um, I can open this particular attachment. So in this case, it's going to open in uh, as an Excel spreadsheet. And once I have the spreadsheet open, <clears throat> once I have the spreadsheet open, I can simply select to save as. So I select file, save as, and I'm going to save this obviously as uh, an Excel spreadsheet once again. And the location that it's pointing to is the location of that internal attachment. So that internal attachment, rough timeline, already exists in a specific directory in my personal brain database or a personal brain folder. 
Um, so when I say save as, uh, I'm actually going to save this as a file which has edit number two, I'll say. So edit number two, it's going to save in the same directory as the native file, which like I said is in a, a very unique directory inside my personal brain. I click on save, and now let's take a look at our attachments for this particular thought. You can see there are now two attachments on rough timeline. My original that I dragged into uh, a personal brain uh, just a moment ago, and now my rough timeline with edit number two. So I can keep track of version control right there from the, the thought tab. I can also, even before I open the document, uh, simply select any of these attachments, copy, and paste it in one more time. So this uh, particular copy is going to be called edit number three. I can simply rename that uh, particular attachment to edit number three or leave that as copy of rough timeline and so on. So I have multiple attachments here on the same thought, all my different edits for this one particular file that I can refer back to at any time. And of course, that is a feature of Personal Brain Pro, the ability to have multiple attachments on a single thought. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Matt. Um, I think what we're going to do now is shift gears. That hopefully will give everyone sort of a basic um, a guideline as to how to integrate all that project management data, um, how to visually connect different projects, and bring it all together in one place. Um, now what we're going to do is just take it up a notch and uh, hand things over to uh, Eric. And uh, Eric, when you, whenever you're ready, you can go ahead and uh, show your screen. And looks like you've got your screen up. And Eric is going to dive uh, a little deeper into this is what your brain will look like once you're starting to manage multiple projects and, and, and connect to various people. So Eric, uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Matt and uh, Shelley. Um, Yes, um, as, as I said earlier, um, I'm uh, using project uh, uh, management uh, as, as, one of my, uh, as, a, as one of my tools, specifically personal brain, to, to, to collect knowledge, to share knowledge, and to keep track of the projects that I do. And, I, and, I, and I, we use a, a personal brain for a, few, for a few things. First of all, to, to, to get all the information in here uh, as, as we speak, and, I, and I'll show you uh, a few elements that we've done. First of all, uh, a project management training we've done. In order to, to, to give a good overview of what that is, um, I'm, I'll show you with one of the training elements we've done, and that is uh, a project management methodology called uh, PRINT2. Uh, by the way, I've also, I use the same thing as Matt does with the uh, ca capturing and, and, and copy and pasting. This is what I also do. Instead of having a, a, a one-dimensional PowerPoint presentation, I quite often use uh, a, a personal brain as, as, as a placeholder for some of my, of some of my sh uh, sheets. And I still have the sheets in here if I, you know, if I've connected all my presentations in here as well. But I can actually have a free flow and make sure that I use some of the, the, the pins up here uh, uh, in, a, in a training environment. So let's go to one of the management methodologies that we have that I've collected. And the one that I want to show you is uh, PRINCE2. I could also, of course, go on, uh, go on here and show you PRINCE2. So what we've done is uh, we've collected uh, the different elements that go with PRINCE2. And I, I, can, I can, when I do a, a training for people, I can first show them, you know, a, a slide like this. What are the benefits of PRINCE2? And this is taken from a PowerPoint or actually a keynote uh, presentation that, uh, that we've made. And I just copied and pasted that in, in thought as a thought icon. I can quickly uh, have to focus on this, and then if I want to move on to something else, like for instance, I want to show quickly or what is the definition of a pro Prince Two project. I can uh, uh, click on here. Um, but for instance, if I would like, uh, I can also have this multiple project management definitions, as you may know. So we've, I've also connected all these in here as well. I've got the uh, the APM project management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we can go back to Prince Two. So what we've done, and what I've done is, uh, I've got Prince 2, as maybe not everybody knows, has a whole bunch of uh, editions. And we've taken uh, specifically the latest version of Prince 2 and um, um, mapped that whole, um, 
manual, uh, so to speak, and made that more interactive. As you, when you read through a manual, be it PRINCE2 or be it any other manual, it is quite straightforward and it's quite difficult, even in, a, in, a, in an online manual that you have, such as a, 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 power, a, 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 a PDF, a portable document. This gives me an opportunity to, to, to show to, to, uh, to the people that I work with, you know, what are the principles of PRINCE2? And I can show it, again, quickly in a sheet, but I can also click in here, and I have those principles underneath here. And then, for instance, I can, uh, instead of having, I can click through and show certain elements. I said, okay, part of the principles of PRINCE2 is have defined roles and responsibilities. Um, I have uh, that is again linked to a to a thought that is called organization, and I can quickly jump through backwards and forwards through what the project management uh, methodology of Prince does for for me. I've also, um, for instance, I can show you here in the in the in the processes. I I use extensively make use of different thought types and colors. Um, as you can see, I also use the tags, and I'll, I'll make my screen a little bit bigger, I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, you can drag and drop, I can either do it with my mouse or just click on here and then just slide this and then this will make, the, uh, make this bigger. Uh, for instance, starting up a project is, as you can see, there it says a process. So Prince2 identifies starting up as, a, as one of the key processes. Uh, I have some text elements in here that I, you know, what's the objective of starting up? What is the, what is the, uh, uh, what are some of the key elements? But I've also included all the Prince2 uh, activities in there, numbered from uh, one till two, and I and I purposely use the the, the the numbering scheme that is used in the manual so that if you want to quickly type something in it, for instance, if I know uh, that something is 14.4. I quickly can see uh, uh, because that's a great way of uh, searching through a personal brain. It's really quick. I can quickly find elements. You know, I can. I can also, if I don't really know what it is, I say, well, I want to see something about someone. You know, what? How about these corporate responsibilities? I can type corp responsibilities, and there I have the corporate responsibilities, and I can quickly show uh, on here, and I can show within the again within the PRINCE2 environment, and I could have chosen to make through the reports function uh, in, in, in personal brain to only show uh, certain uh, um, tagged or types of, of thoughts. Uh, I haven't done that for the purpose of this, uh, this, this demonstration. So what we've done here, so there's, within PRINCE2 there are uh, whole sets of different responsibilities, just as an example, and this is what you could do with a project, as you could have in your project, uh, have a, uh, an environment where you say, okay, you know, corporate and program management, and then underneath that you would identify, you know, what are the corporate responsibilities. And you can then, uh, and I have, these are the generic ones from Prince too, but what I quite often do with, when I work in a project, I look through here and say, okay, wait a minute, which ones are going to be useful in my project here? I select those and copy and paste them in, a, in, in an active project, and I'll show you in a, in a little bit. But I can also say, well, I don't want to look from a corporate perspective, but I want to look at from an organizational perspective of quality or, or a plan. So let's go to plans. What kind of responsibilities are there with regards to plans? And now the whole view changes. Now I can see within the PRINCE2 environment all the responsibilities that have been identified that have to do with what's called a theme called plans, and I can you know, monitor changes to a project plan. But I can also see, if I click on that one, that it also goes to the project assurance, and I can quickly jump and forth uh, through some of those elements. I can go quickly back again, and that's also the nice thing about the breadcrumbs. I can quickly show uh, where we've been. So let's go back to Prince 2 and the, uh, the edition. So, so that's uh, uh, one element where we have used um, uh, PRINCE2, and I'll show one more, more, a little bit more detail how beneficial that can be. If you look at, for instance, at the, the process and more in detail, for instance, the uh, initiating of a project, and then specifically these, uh, these ones, for instance, 
So what I've done here is that I have, within the model, print two identifies has different product types. I mean, different uh, uh, products that can be used. And for instance, the business case um, is going to be used in this process, which is called assemble the project initiation documentation. So all these, and I've also, as you can see, um, not only have I identified this document types, if I and if I click, click on here, you can see I have um, I've borrowed some from some of your previous uh, present uh, presenters, uh, but I've also added a whole bunch of myself, a whole bunch of different lesson. Uh, whole, oh, I made that. I want to undo that. And that's a, a great point, Eric, because um, in addition to sort of. Uh, Matt spoke a lot about kind of the visual connections, the parent-child and jump relationships, but you can see as you evolve your brain, in Eric's case, he's also using not only thought relationships, but thought types, which he has here, and then I'm also seeing some thought tags. So, yeah, Eric, if you could spend a little bit of time on your thought tags and, and thought yes. types and how they're helping you, I think that, that will be uh, very interesting to all of us. Yeah, that's, uh, um, I, by the way, I also what I do is I not only use it, I also uh, use thought link types. So I have, I can quickly see, so assemble the project. So in this process, I can say this one, assemble uh, the project initiation documentation. I can go uh, show you, we've done the same thing for the PM PMBOK. I can show you for PM PMBOK version 4, which is the latest one. I can show you in the knowledge areas, for instance. Let's look at time management where we have, again, certain activities. I have, you know, the, the defined activities as, 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 as identified within the PM block says you have some inputs, which this is an input. Uh, the scope baseline, as you can see, it says here PM block deliverable. It's, it's an input and it goes into the 6.1 defined activities, which is tagged as a PM block 4 uh, uh, element. Um, and I've chosen. Uh, for purpose of clarification for myself, and you know, you can make, uh, and this, the, the, the great thing about personal brain is there's multiple ways of visualizing or linking things. And you know, one of the questions that quite often comes up also is, you know, how do you start? Well, I just started with adding a few a, a thought type like concepts, or uh, I added um, um, one or two uh, link types, and I slowly started growing some thoughts, and some of them I moved around, and some of, sometimes I, I change uh, thought types, uh, I make super types, uh, and, and I can show you what a, what a super type is. I'll show you here. It was a PM block uh, is, so I have project deliverable is the super type, and I have underneath that I have a document and a log. Uh, I have a high level PM block, but then I have under prints too, I have a whole bunch of different deliverables. So I have even and I've taken the breakdown that PRINCE2 identifies. It's you know, a, 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 a project baseline, uh, a, a project record, or, uh, you know, ba or, 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 a, or, a, uh, or a report. And I can actually search on these. I can select it. And I could, by, by looking through it, you know, I could quickly find all my end project reports, for instance. Or I can also uh, quickly uh, generate one of those. So, so this is a way of, for me, uh, sharing information. Um, as a, uh, but also I have, for instance, I have here one called expert judgment. And I happen to know that one of the problems with expert judgment is something that I had captured before is it's what's called the expert paradox. So I, when, I, when I typed in this word expert, when I, and I said, you know, I think I know more about expert. So I just typed in expert. And I, oh, yeah, I put something about expert systems, expert forecasting. So now quickly I can start from a, from a very defined project management body of knowledge, for me, the, the one thing that stood out is something that I had read a while ago that I, you know, thought was interesting to keep is what I have called the uh, the expert product. And now all of a sudden, by working through this project management brain, I came into a section of my brain that I'd done earlier, where I said, "Oh, wait a minute, you know." Because I'd done some look, some work on, you know, what are typical knowledge communication problems, and there it is. The expert, uh, the expert paradox, and if I click in here, then if I go quickly on expert paradox, it quickly tells me, you know, the few notes that I took and that I, when I was going through this document, 
and I, that, that stood out for me. So this is a very uh, quick way for me to, to, to look through, uh, um, um, to, to make use of the, the more, um, how do you say it, um, relationships that are, you know, the, 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 the serendipity more or less that, that, that exists within personal brain and the more you start adding. By the way, this brain at this moment is about 6,000 thoughts. So I've got a few other uh, brains and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm still slowly adding into this. And it has about, I think, 2,500 internal documents as well because I keep my, I'm a road warrior, uh, so I have a lot of my documents in there. I, can, I, I cannot show my current project because I'm working for a client that is, that is uh, uh, closed off, uh, but I can show uh, some, some other things that, I have, uh, that I've done. So if I go to, uh, for instance, my active projects, and I can uh, go to my project archive. When you start a project, uh, um, when I start a project, one of the things that you need to quite often get said is, you know, what are your lessons learned? So that's one of the things you do at the end, and it's something that I do at the beginning. So I, I have um, a, a, a lessons learned archive, and again, these are all the lessons that I have learned and that I, you know, there's way many more. And I have, again, chosen to um, have a, what I call a matrix view of, 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 of my lesson learned. I have anything that's a lesson learned archive that I find important, I just hang underneath this thing. And then I sometimes uh, choose if I want to link that to, to a, a more of a specific element. For instance, I have some personal lessons learned. So if I click on personal lessons learned, you'll see that this lessons learned archive flips because it's a jump. And here, these are some of my personal lessons learned that I have. And you know, I've, my, my, one of my favorite, of course, is, is, as you all know, a fool with a tool is still a fool. So uh, even uh, using personal brain or any other tool, and if you would go to my website, you will see a nice article that I've just written about the, uh, the tools that I use. And you know, one of the, my the key tools that I use, actually, apart from a pen and paper, is, is, is humor, common sense, and, 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 and I use personal brain as well, of course. Uh, but I can quickly go back again here and have, I can also see, for instance, I have, uh, and I've linked this for the purpose of here, I had a project that I did for a client. Uh, one of them is, uh, is Papendal, and Papendal is the, uh, is the, uh, the uh, conference center for the Dutch Olympic Committee. Years ago, I did an implementation of a software package for them. So I have in here, and if I right quickly click here, I have the end project report in here, the, which is what was written. I can click it open. It's written in Dutch, so all you Dutch people were, are more than welcome to read it, but I won't do it for all the English people. So I have taken out of that document and I read through it again, so, you know, what are my key lessons learned? Well, you know, you never communicate too much. So this is a way for me, and I had also used it, I will, you know, I like using these little tags, uh, I, uh, either by, cu by cutting and pasting or just by uh, 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 using, for instance, I could do it like this, and I can, um, where is it, uh, where is capture, oh, I can capture thought I can, and it can, I can do this, I can show this nice eagle that is flying over uh, very close to where we live. I can change the I'll go back to that later again. So let's go back to my, uh, my, my, my active projects and let's go to a project. And again, Matt showed a great example of, of how to organize information in your, in, 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 in your project. There is uh, multiple ways of doing it. Uh, I choose to have um, a couple of elements that I want to always have in there. I have a process and a theme there, and it's nothing more than a placeholder that links to my knowledge about the project management processes. And again, you know, I, also for this one, I have for training purposes, but also for myself, because as we grow older, I sometimes forget, and I think it is very important to realize you cannot have everything in your, you know, your mental brain. It is very handy to have some of these elements in here. So I can go back again to where we were. And I have, and I choose to have for a project, uh, uh, I have a folder where I keep all my deliverables. I have a folder where I keep all my management products. And I have, based on the, and this is just the way that I use it, I have what I call so-called baseline product, uh, products, records. And if I want to, for instance, now add a new product, for instance, a let's say a project brief for this project. I would type project brief. 
um, and I can give it a name. And this is something that I've been doing also lately. Instead of having the name Project Brief, which means then the whole uh, list of Project Briefs would show up, I have started using Comma Project Brief. And I'll show you what happens when you do that. So I made that. Now it shows Project Brief. But the minute I click on it, it now has the name Baselines Project Brief. And if I would have done that from the start, let me sh then it would have actually had, I can do this from all the way from the project name that I have given to this project could be, and I can change, quickly change that. Uh, and if I add those uh, thoughts there with the thought, that I would have a very long uh, project name. And I can show you that with the with some of the other projects that I've done. But let's go back here, baselines, and we had done a project brief, and I can again, and I've done the same thing. What I've done here is attachment. So I have a project brief here as a document. So that's going to be attached, and it's going to be open. And I have the project brief in here that I can fill in. And I, let's say I'll save this document, because it's just a, it's also a template. And the only thing that I now need to do is, is is I, I, I'll set the thought type as a project brief. So if I now go quickly back, for instance, to reports here, and I would say I will I only want to see the uh, where is it? There we are. Oh it comes a little bit using a right there it is. Now I see all the project briefs quickly here. I can either, and then I, from here I can quickly, you know, I, this is the ones that I just made, but I have a, a brief that has a, a, for a, a pilot. So I can quickly go to this document. I had a project with a, uh, with a organizational, uh, uh, educational organization in the Netherlands. And I quickly get, 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 can find uh, all uh, project briefs. I can uh, do the same thing for uh, tags. I so, say, you know, I, I only want to see something or my, I only want to see, for instance, uh, all my uh, project records, etc., etc. So that's a really great way of, uh, or for instance, uh, if I want to use a tag, I say, well, I only want to see things that have to do with my Mac or that have to do with, uh, let's say, Prince Tutor 2009 version. And now I get to see them all. And I can also filter here, you know, sort by name. Uh, I can also sort by the activity level, you know, which one have I used here. Well, this one, of course, and it shows you. And I can do even one more cooler thing. If I am giving a presentation to people, I only want to show this for this moment. And I don't want to cite it for the first section. I can say normal. And then it will only show the Prince to 2009 uh, thoughts. And anything else has a line through it here. Uh, and if I click on that, uh, it'll show it, but it'll, you know, course will be lost because I, it, it doesn't show. So I'll just quickly uh, take that away again. Something else that I've been using Personal Brain for is, uh, so not only mapping it against uh, um, Using it for my project archive or for my for my uh, for project management, but it is also specifically in in, in uh, um, showing relationships between elements. Because we quite often we see the personal brain in in normal view, or sometimes in act in outline view. The view that I really uh, uh, quite like is uh, the the expanded is, is the is the expanded view. I can. Basically, it is a free-for-all thing. And the good thing about that thing is that I can actually save those views. These are the only views you can save. And I can I save a few of those, and I can show that to you. So for instance, uh, I have a project conference. In project management training for Prince2, there is a very nice example about a, 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 a project conference. So I have loaded that as a, and it's quite small. So you have the conference up here that then has and it shows the flow of all the elements that I need to develop going through this project. And these are all thoughts that are linked again to the as, as, as deliverables to this specific project. So you can make a, a description in your deliverables list where you have all the different elements. And then with the extended view, you can actually start linking them. You know, what deliverable needs to be done after what, what deliverable. You can group deliverables. And 
becomes quite, which happen in a normal view, it can become quite, quite a overwhelming. But by having this expanded view, I can actually show to my clients, or to my colleagues, or to someone that I'm working on, you know, you know what importance is is of the on-day stat because we have all of this, and it's a little bit small, as you can see. Um, see if I can make it a little bit big, bigger. Eric, I think it looks uh, it looks good, and we're getting a lot of positive feedback on there. That's a, a great example of uh, of an expanded view there. And the other one is then I say I, I, I and then I have another expanded view, which is the one I have actually. You know, where where do the products of this thing break? You know, how do they break down? Now I can quickly okay the, the delegate handout back. Okay, and I can quickly now say okay, uh, Shelley, that's your responsibility. I can add that to Shelley. Say okay, Shelley, that's your responsibility for the for the delegate handout. And if I would do plus here, then you would see Shelly show up here as well. And now she can, so this is a way of communicating people. Uh, another way of using the expanded view is, uh, for instance, what I've used as well, is uh, first of all for project training again, which is this one, is uh, I was struggling with how can you make a matrix look in, a, in, 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 in this. So I have you know, project classifications is lots of doing ways of looking at that. I say, well, you put the base on the type of project you're developing, or the type of work that needs to be done. Is it intellectual work, or is it is it craft work? Intellectual work could be, you know, a new design of a, of a business process, and craft work could be building a house. It's fairly well established that needs to be done. Um, is it a tangible product, a house, or is it an intangible product? For instance, a procedure which is still tried across. So this is a way for me to 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 show by using these these expanded views, what the relationships are with these documents. And I can then, uh, um, and one last example, um, I've got two more, I've got, I've got my own family tree in here, which is a very great way of, where is it? Where is it? There we go. So I have, with all the years in here, and I've linked it to all the something. So that's the way of, of uh, and I've been able to identify my oldest ancestor, which is a guy called Isaac Hamburger that we know uh, passed away in 1782. This is a way for me to, you know, every now and then to play with the personal brain and show a few things that I hadn't looked at. Somehow something is here. And Eric, that could be the uh, uh, the go-to meeting sometimes. Yeah, I think that's what it is. The presentation, yeah, because we're seeing uh, a little bit of lag time here on our end. But we I'm do sure have a timeline that opened up. No, it's quite all right. And and the timeline is uh, just a, a great, uh, looks like just another great example of, uh, in this case, you know, ancestry, but uh, but uh, how the expanded view can be used. So it's really nice. Yeah, and 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 I also use the timeline. Uh, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quickly get out of here and I'll start it up again. The I use the timeline sometimes to um, you know I, I add dates to there. I do have. Okay, there we go again. So I have the timeline here, and I, and I have a few elements I can show, you know, what happened in 2000. Okay, I've got your name, I've got uh, the, uh, the BS, the business, uh, the, the, the bridge standards, the 2000 uh, project management vocabulary was uh, established. I can go quickly look through those elements as well. Um, let's see, is there anything else that I wanted to show? Oh, that's more or less it. Okay, great. Well, we do have some uh, some great questions. You've really generated a lot of questions, and and uh, people are interested in so many different aspects of uh, of the uh, uh, the brain that you've presented here today. Uh, so we'll try and get through them all. I realize we're coming up on the hour, but we've got quite a few questions uh, for Eric, and so I'm just going to jump in with uh, with a few of them. First off. People were really intrigued by the images that you've associated with some of your thoughts. 
Uh, now in mine, my example where I highlight over a kitchen or something like that, I had a solid image. Several people noticed that you had clear backgrounds on some of the images that you have attached to thoughts. Can you I can show you about how you generate those. Yeah, let me give you an example. So I have a, I, I, I had a, I was expect, I have a presentation here. Uh, I wanted a presentation on project closure. Project closure. One of my statements is there is too much time spent on starting projects and too little on closing projects. And you know the the catch is that I show this and then I slowly said, you know, what is the characteristic of a failed project that they were started and the characteristic of a successful project that they were closed, and I rest my case. So this was a quite a mundane thing. So what I can do here is I can go here and I can say select all. And I made this in Keynote transparent as well. Let's say I have a, a photo on project closure, which I think I have actually. There. Okay. Let's say I want to manage project closure. There's a I want to have, which is you know somewhere else, but I want to add that to this thing. All I need to do now is, is uh, um, oh, I don't think I, just a minute. Copy. And there it is. By, by using uh, the transparency or the uh, in keynote, uh, I, and I can change that in keynote uh, when I, where's the inspector? I can show the transparent, I can change the transparency of this, this, uh, this box here. I can make it uh, a transparent also in, in here as well. Oh, so I hope that answers the question. I haven't, I haven't tried it in Microsoft Project, but I'm assuming that it would work more or less the same. Um, and of so course, to so let everyone know, like you know, we create, uh, we just copy images off of the web, or if you're fluent in Photoshop, you know, there's so many different ways that images can be made. But your images uh, uh, that you're using in that manner with that that uh, clear background really add quite a bit to the uh, uh, the presentation of the brain. Yeah, Prince. For this one, I just I just had a, a I just did the capture thought. I had a, a a document open, which is an article that I was reading, and I wanted to capture this specific classification that I showed you in the brain, and I just just did a copy and paste, and I didn't make it transparent or anything. I just copied it out of the uh, captured it out of the, the the PDF. That's great, great. Well, another question that uh, that uh, actually just came in. Uh, this one from John is, what were you using before Personal Brain? And maybe to expand on that, uh, what was it that got you started with Personal Brain? What was the, the one feature that, uh, that brought you over to start using Personal Brain? Well, um, well first of all, I've, start, I've, I've used, as I think most of us use, uh, just a, 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 a bookcase. Uh, a pen and paper as in to collect notes in my notebooks and I have just a uh, oodles and oodles of hard disks uh, with uh, with data uh, churning in them and I try to organize those as good as I can in a in quite often a flat directory uh, structure or just dump them in there and have a I had a, a, a PC where I had a, a, a full text uh, indexing working so I could quickly search stuff what I what what would intrigue me about personal brain. This is, I think I've used personal brain version two or three. So I go back, and I've used it in in, in stints uh, over the last, no, I would say, at least seven years. Um, but uh, quite often the free version. What I like about it is the graphical display. It it, it is it is crisp. It is uh, intuitive. Um, I can link. Uh, as you can see, I've got the I've got, for instance, I. Uh, Different ways of linking things. Um, I have a way of capturing notes. Um, it is it is for me quite as I say. Um, the, the the problem with with as you know is knowledge and, and maybe not everyone is aware of that. You know, searching quite a lot of people use different search uh, methodologies. So I have a search methodology that is I'm quite visual, but I I I, I need something that I use a, based on a word. So let's say test, and I like the way. It quickly comes up and what I really find very smart of personal brain is the fact that it uses shows me it is not only test article but it's the test it's, it shows ones based on what I've used uh, last um, so I, I didn't want to be confined by a placement structure of, of where to put stuff I want to basically be able to dump it in organize it reorganize it you know if you look at my concepts I have 
uh, tons of different concepts in here. Uh, I've got all my articles, and I can link them if, when I'm working on something, if I can show you with my articles, uh, which are all articles that I've collected that are all contained in the brain. You know, the ones that are yellow, I have already uh, worked through. I, I added them to my lessons learned. I added them to, uh, I linked them to some other elements as well. So that's what I really like about it. It is there is a there is a a, a, a there is structure in it. I can, I do need, and I think people need to realize that it takes a bit of discipline in terms of in discovering for yourself what thought types work best for you or what tags work best for you. And don't be afraid to every now and then you know move a few things around, but just start throwing stuff in there. And you can always add tags later or, or change it later. And and it's the serendipity that also makes it very you know uh, interesting for me because I. As I said, showed on the expert thing when I was doing that thing, and actually that's how it happened. I said, "Wait a minute, I have something about expert." And I, instead of trying to find it in a document, and we all know that Google can search a billion documents in a five, in, in a second. Microsoft uh, 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 Windows Explorer it takes about five days to do that. Uh, so I really like the way this goes slightly fast, to that I can actually connect things again, uh, break links. So that's what I like about personal brain. Fantastic, thanks. And uh, also, Martin asked. Uh, he said that you mentioned there are over six thousand thoughts in this brain. Almost six thousand. Almost six thousand. Yeah. And, uh, and also, uh, in, in addition to the statistics of how many thoughts and links, how long did it take you to uh, to build and construct a brain of this size? This one, I did, uh, it took me about half a year, to, about three quarters of a year to build this one because I've been, I've been, I've been, I've had a whole bunch of other. Brains, but this is what I call my future brain, and I, I, I have dismantled some old stuff. So I've been populating this brain uh, for the last half year, the last three months. I've been uh, populating this brain uh, with, uh, and it's been growing ever since. So it, it, it can go fairly quick. Specifically, and I can show you that if I, what I do also, because I do, uh, for instance, I have. Um, I put, once went to a congress, the uh, project management uh, uh, congress. So what I did, instead of having it in a document, and I haven't sorted through these yet, uh, and that's something that I do every now and then. Take one up, see if there's a lesson that I can learn, put it, in, link it to my lessons learned, uh, give it, give it a place, and that's how, how also how you build links. And it's the same thing with your brain, your real brain. By going back to certain elements and trying to, to, to you know, one of the learning elements that we how people learn is not only by you know learning by experience or by articulating it, but the actual codification of, of, of knowledge in your brain by by reading into it and linking it to something else is for me a way to learn and to 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 to, to uh, become agile with what I have. But for instance, this one thought alone has, as you can see, quite a few uh, uh, elements linked into it, and they are all presentations for documents that were shared to us as part of this World Congress that I uh, participated in. So. Um, but it means it doesn't mean that I have actively looked at all those elements of my brain. And uh, um, by the way, it's a myth that you only use 10% of your your real brain. Uh, um, there's a really great book about that. But that's something for something for another time. <laughs> well, great. And uh, one additional question is: uh, You're obviously a, a power user of of personal brain. Um, this is a question that we get quite often. Um, and we've got different people within our organizations that follow different rules as far as, do you have one brain or many? I personally use many, many different brains. I see you have a few different uh, brain buttons there at the top of your screen. Well, my uh, test brain is empty. <laughs> I, this is where I test the things that I want to do sometimes, copy and pasting and that kind of stuff. I have multiple brains, uh, but they're smaller. Mm -hmm. um, I have one massive brain that I'm developing, which is this future brain that will keep growing. I'd like to keep everything in one brain. I, you know, I, I, as I, in my head, I have one brain, but I do every now and then uh, extract elements uh, of my brain, either as a brain zip to share with people. For instance, I can, based on the tags, I can share the PRINCE2 methodology and extract it and export it. Uh, uh, or I just build something, but I quite often build it in again. And the other thing that I've done is uh, I have uh, in my website, uh, I have, for instance, uh, in management of projects, uh, that is, this is behind this red, registered element, is a uh,
No worries, now I can see it. Oh, and I know why. I'm on all in at the moment. Because it's a... Um, I have a. Uh, I can show you. I have a. Uh, I have my. Uh, I have some brain elements in there that I exported. Uh, as you can see, it's, so this the same brain overview that I had on my uh, that I had uh, on the brain. I can share this here with the people that are registered on my website. Great, and yes, that's a, a new feature of uh, Personal Brain Six. We haven't really talked about a lot today, or at all. I don't think the differences between Personal Brain Five and Six, but. Uh, um, uh, I will leave uh, folks with a, a bit of information, and uh, since we're right on the hour, or just a little past, and, and then hand it back to you, Eric. Um, uh, the brain that I demoed earlier today is available on our website at www.thebrain.com slash apps, A-P-P-S. So please feel free to log in and download uh, that brain as a sample brain to help you get started with uh, a couple of fresh ideas on, on creating a brain specifically for project management, and then see where, uh, where that, uh, that brain takes you from, uh, from there. Also, we're always available at support at thebrain.com, so feel free to contact us at any time if you have any additional questions. Um, if we didn't get to all of your questions today, again, feel free to contact us or join us at any time on one of our Personal Brain 101 classes. Those are held every Tuesday and Friday, and uh, you can sign up. And we really focus on just getting started with personal brain, creating thoughts, creating attachments, really just the, uh, the basics of, of personal brain. And several uh, folks out there today, Eric, have asked if your brain is available for, uh, for download. I see we can uh, see the online version at your website. But if you would like to share uh, any of your contact information, if people want to know more about uh, from directly from you about uh, your company, your site, the brain that you're working on. Feel free, uh, Eric, to uh, to share that. But I just want to say thank you so much for joining uh, us today. I've had a really uh, just a uh, just a great pleasure just uh, seeing all of your information and how you fit it together. It's uh, been very inspiring for me. So uh, thanks again for joining us. And Eric, I'll hand it back to you for uh, any closing statements that you have. Well, thank you very much, uh, Matt, for the opportunity to share this uh, with uh, with your with with the with the personal brain user community and, and other interested people. It's been a pleasure for me as well. Uh, um, yes, I, anybody that wish like would be would like to contact me can do so. Uh, you can either go to my website, which is at www, and I can show that here on the uh, which is uh, mbdexter.ca. And there's contact information on there if you go, uh, which is here. You can either in, email info at MBDX, but you can also email, email me directly, which is e.hamburger. And yes, that's just as it is, uh, is, as it is spelled, uh, uh, at ambidexter.ca. And I'm more than uh, happy to share some elements. Some of the elements are uh, a part of a, a project management material that we send out, so I'm not going to be able to share the whole full brain, but there's certain elements that for, for sure uh, I'll be uh, willing to share with, uh, with some of the people uh, that are interested in, 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 in getting some more information on that, be it Prince2, be it uh, um, the PM book or some other project management methodologies that we have, uh, uh, let me sort of brain-brained. It's been a real pleasure, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, meeting some of you uh, over, uh, over the email, and uh, maybe uh, uh, another time as well on one of the other personal brain demos again. Excellent. Thanks again, Eric. And today's session has been recorded and will be available on our website either later today or tomorrow at www.thebrain.com. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, enjoy your week and enjoy using personal brain.